I wanted to go over the application that we're going to be building in this course. And what I'm going to be showing you is only the front end application. So that's the application that the user is going to see or the admin users are going to see because they're going to be the one to have access to the admin dashboard. But there's a whole back end application that is built using Spring Boot and the actuator that is just code and I'm not going to be showing it here. So the only thing I'm going to be showing here is the actual front end application, uh, which the end user will actually be using. So as you can see, what you're looking at is the monitoring dashboard. But before I go and explain what's going on here, I want to at least give you some ideas about the scenario that I had in my head when I built this. So let's go over to the next tab. And this is a separate application altogether. And you can think of it as an employee manager. So in a lot of the companies out there, they have like some internal tools or some internal website that they use to just manage all of their employees. So we're trying to recreate the same scenario here. So let's say you work in some company or some organization and they just have this internal tool where they keep track of their employees. So as you can see, that's exactly what this app is. So you can come in here and add a new employee. So I can add like John Doe and let's say this is uh, John raised.com and let's say this guy's a new React.js um, developer. So we can do React.js and let's give him some phone number and then some picture URL and then save. As you can see now, we have John Doe here added in, in our list. And of course, since this is an employee manager application, you already know we can like edit an employee. So I can come here and say, hey, this guy's middle name now or something, or maybe the last name changed to uh, Suarez or something and save. You can see now it's Suarez. And of course we can delete an employee so I can click here and then I get this confirmation. And if I click no, nothing happens. If I click yes, then the employee is deleted. And lastly, we can search an employee. So I can put Ed, as you can see, as I type in the list is filtering or Scarlet, and you can see uh, the list is filtering. So those are just little features that I just added to this just to you know give it some sense. So there might be two or three people on the team and they're responsible to just manage this application here. So that's one thing. Now, the admin will monitor this application using this tool right here, which is what we're going to be building in this course. So I'm not going to be building this application in this course, but I'll give you the code for it. I'll just give you the code for this front end. It's using the same back end, but this is what we're going to be building, which is this dashboard. And now let's go over what this dashboard is telling us. So on top in the navigation bar, you have the name of the application. So that's the system monitoring dashboard. I mean, this is just a name I came up with. You can pretty much name this whatever you want. And then in the middle, we have some more useful information. So the first one is the system and that's just the overall system information. So if the system is up, um, that's good. Everything is good. If anything is down, like the your database is down or something like that, then this is going to be down. Okay. And I'm going to show you an example of that. The second piece of information is the database. So here it tells you what database is being used. In our case, that's MySQL. And it also tells you the status of that database. And this is up. So our database is good. Next one is the disk space. And that's just the disk space available for the Java virtual machine. This is useful information. Again, you can check this out and say, hey, maybe we're running out of space. We need a bigger server or maybe at a certain period of time. There's just so many requests coming in and you know you're running out of space or something like that so this is what that is and then next one is the number of processors available to the java virtual machine so that will tell you how many processors you have running etc so uh, you know whoever builds some application they might say hey whatever server this application is running on you know we need to have that much space we need to have at least three processors and things like that so um, this is just useful information the typical type of information you would see in a dashboard and then lastly we have the uptime of the system so that's how long the system has been running uh, and this is updating real time as you can see here by the second so that's just some useful information right off the back right on top you can to just check out and then we have a bunch of card where we have some of the most common HTTP code and we can check to see how many responses we got that were good or bad or something like that. So first one is 200 and get 31, 200 responses. So that's good, which is why everything is all green. And then we have 404 and then 400 and then 500. So 500 would be like bad because it's just 
internal server error so you would if that would be something you would definitely want to check out if you see like hey you're getting a spike in 500 response and then below we have our chart so this is just for better visual representation as you can see all of our requests have been successful and we're gonna change that in a second I'm gonna send some bad requests and then you're gonna see how uh, those charts are gonna change and I'm using a very popular JavaScript library that we're gonna go over in this course to build this chart super easy super powerful and then below we have a list of all the HTTP traces. So it's not just those four HTTP response code that are here, all of the HTTP response or requests are here. And you can see we have timestamp, which is when the actual uh, request was sent. And then we have the method, if it's get or post or whatever. And then we have the time it took, which is at, in the first case, 22 milliseconds. And then we have the status of the response, which is 200. And then the actual URI, or the resource that they try to access, which is just the employee all, which is what we did when we refresh this page, we call this endpoint right here. And I can also click on this. I can either click on the eye or just click anywhere on that specific row just to see more detailed information. As you can see, tell even tell us the user agent. In that case, that was Chrome because I just use Chrome. And you, you get, you're gonna see how this is gonna change when I start using Postman and things like that. And then the response, we can check it out. 200 response and the date and some content type information and where the request originated in that case localhost 4200 which is this application right here okay so this is what this is and then we have pagination so you can go to different pages i'm only showing 10 uh, entries at a time in every single page so you can go into different pages and, and etc so now what would happen if the system is is down or let's say our mysql database is down or something like that so i've already opened my services and i have mysql here so i have it selected so i'm gonna go ahead and stop mysql and then you're gonna see how this is gonna change so i'm gonna go ahead and stop it and let's see what's gonna happen mysql is now stopped the service is no longer available which means the back end will try to access the service and it won't have access to it because the service is down so let's see now how this is what's going to happen in our monitoring dashboard so you can see now i didn't even have to refresh and now our system is down it doesn't know what the database is because it doesn't have access to it and the database is down okay everything else is good you know our disk is good process is good but now our system is down so as someone watching this will come in and say oh um you know something is wrong let me call the admin or something like that i'm just trying to put this in, into context for you so that's what happened so i'm gonna go ahead and, and and run this back so that we can continue this video so i'm gonna go ahead and start it back up i had to pause the video to wait for this to come up it takes like maybe 30 seconds or something like that. So let's just see what's gonna happen. Once it's up, all of this status is gonna is gonna change. And I'm gonna pause the video because I don't want you to, you know, wait for like 45 seconds here for me and me not saying anything. So I'm just gonna pause it and then whenever this is back on and then I'll come back. So now, I mean, I guess it took like 45 seconds or something like that and then everything is back up, okay? So you can see now everything is dark or they're not red anymore and everything looks good. And then lastly, which I didn't mention when I went over this list is this to export to Excel. So you might want to like have to run some report or you might have to like send some some information to someone else because they need to see what's going on. So you can just come in here and then click on export to Excel and we'll just download this as an Excel file and then you can just open it. And let this come up. Yes. And you can see we have all of the requests here and in this file so you can just use this and then send some report to someone and say hey this is what's happening here etc etc what i want to do now is just generate some bad requests so that you guys can see how, how this data is going to change so i'm going to go over to postman and this is the same endpoints that the this application is calling so this application in the back is just making the same calls to the same backend application which is this this right here so if i send this request to get all the employees as you can see i have the list of all the employees which is the same list that you're seeing on here right so let's say i put in some wrong url so instead of saying all i put in some o's see here for instance right so if i send this request i get a full four okay so because it's not found Let's send this request a few more times, a few more times. Okay, so now if we go back to the app, you can see now we have 6404 
and you can see those requests here because they didn't go through you can see we have 404 and you can see the url that the user is trying to access so something like this you just look at it and say okay i need to contact whoever is trying to access my api and tell them hey you have the wrong url because obviously this is failing because you know we know we don't have this route in our application so let's go back to postman and let me go to do a post so this is a post request to send a new user into the to add a new user into the application so i can just remove this request body and then send that request so that it can fail okay as you can see 400 by request so i'm going to send it again and again and go back scroll up refresh you can see now we have three uh 400 requests as you can see we have this this three here okay we just generated them and you can see our chart is also changing uh, appropriately according to uh, what we're doing so lastly i want to send in some 500 requests so i'm just gonna go back to postman and i'm gonna see if i can find some employee that don't exist like i tried earlier like this 555 id so there's like an endpoint to find an employee and you have to pass in the id of that employee so i'm passing in some id that i know that don't exist on my system and i'm just gonna send this request a few times so one, two, three, just a few times, okay? So now we should have a few 500 requests. So if I go ahead and refresh, you can see now we have eight 500 requests and you can see on the list below here, we can see those requests coming in. So this is just a small application and this is just showing some of the things that you can do using the Spring Boot Actuator and there's way more you can do with this actuator um, but this course will give you a good solid understanding of you know not just understanding what the actuator is and how to build it in the back end but also how some front end application which ultimately you would probably build because you know it wouldn't make sense to be looking at responses and json format like like we have here right so you would want to have something that's uh, visually appealing and easy to understand like a dashboard so that just is very small simple there's way more you can do with the actuator you can even like for instance and those requests that are like 200 you can look at the body and see what information comes in the response body and things like that there's way more you can do uh, with this tool but we're gonna put down a good foundation and hopefully you'll learn something very valuable that you'll be able to use in in real time either for your company or maybe you're gonna come up with this idea for a company or maybe you're just gonna do it for your own good or for your own learning so get ready i'll see you guys in the next video